give him a hand. Woo! Hello, my name is Cassandra Rojas, and I'm the Chief Marketing Officer. Hello, my name is Jerry Rojas, I'm the Chief Marketing Officer. Hello, I'm Adrian Montes, and I'm the Chief Design Officer. Uh, Mud and grass was getting stuck to studying athletes. It's difficult to perform well in any games, and when they have a lot of mud stuck to their cleats, it's easy to slip and fall. So our cleat design uh, will take out mud from tight places in your cleats. Um, it will it will also be sturdy enough to take out tight, compact mud. Our our product will have large teeth to take out large clumps of mud, and it will also be small and portable, which makes our product easy to be carried around. Target market: anyone that uses cleats. Sequoia student they play sports. Primary target market, 13 to 40. We choose this target market because this age which most athletes play these sports. Um, so this is Matt Lopez and he's a baseball player at Sequoia High School and he said that our product was a really good idea because every time he plays um, baseball, he gets mud stuck in his cleats and it's really hard to um, take it out. Um, so for marketing, we're selling the cleat cleaner for five dollars each, and we're planning to sell it. And the second showcase, I mean the third showcase, um, which is gonna be held at Sequoia, and it's gonna be at on um, April second. No, um, April second. And then um, for promotion, um, we're gonna have social media where we have an Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook, and. We're gonna hand out flyers, and on those flyers, we're gonna tell them to go on our social media and be an active follower, and give us back their feedback, and if they do these requirements, then we will give them a discount off when they try to buy a clay cleaner. And we also are planning to get bracelets, each person on our team, so that we can help promote it to our friends and family. Um, the competitive advantage is that it's stylish, portable, high quality and expensive, and it's something from students to students. So Clean Cleaner doesn't really have a, a, a competitor because our product is innovative and unique. Uh, when we looked up for portable Clean Cleaners, nothing came up, but what did come up was masks that can be laid on the ground, but those are not really portable, and uh, you can't not see what, like, what you're cleaning on your shoes. We passed out our surveys to 51 students asking the color, price, what design they wanted, and if they wanted a Sequoia High School logo on it. We learned that the material that they wanted to be made out is hard plastic. Hard plastic. The price, the most of the people who took the survey wanted it to be $5 and wanted purple clean cleaners. About our partner, Patagoda Arts, is a local industry located in San Francisco that is willing to manufacture our product is the least expensive and they already have the design and the dimension of our product. So our startup cost is zero, is zero dollars. Our manufacturing is acrylic which costs $55 and our cost for three months is laser cutting which costs $60 for a total of $115. So the cost is two dollars and eighty-eight cents. The price is five dollars. The profit is two dollars and twelve cents. So the total profit will be eighty-five dollars. And for forty cleaners, it's five dollars per unit. So it'll be two hundred dollars. Uh, we are asking for a total of one hundred fifty uh, one hundred fifteen dollars. So this way we can um, um, cover the manufacturing and. Uh, the cost of total goods. We will have to sell 24 clean cleaners to reach the break even point, which is $120. No matter the time of the year, clean cleaners are always here.
Great, thanks guys. Um, really good presentation. I think this is definitely a product that fills a niche. So, um, you know, a great, great idea you guys came up with. Um, quick question, when looking into the manufacturing of the product itself, have you guys considered looking at alternatives like manufacturing yourself using, I know you guys have 3D printers here, um, it might be cheaper, I'm not sure if you guys explore those options. But we gave up, we passed out surveys to a bunch of students here at Sequoia and we asked them um, what type of like platform would they want and we had different options like metal, plastic, and um, cardboard and we, they, they decided um, they wanted hard plastic so that's kind of where we got um, based off on the results. Gotcha, thanks. You guys are really like your presentation. I think your product's pretty simple and uh, solves a clear problem. So I don't think you need too much selling on that. But you mentioned your product is uh, unique and innovative. <laughs> How would you respond to somebody trying to copy your product and try to do something similar? Well, I would say it's unique and innovative because um, our, our product, when we just like searched up for like tree cleaner, it just came out like a mat, a mat. Like a mat that could be placed on the ground and like no portable cleaning that came out like when we searched for that. So. Yeah, my, my question is more like if somebody saw your product and they also make a portable cleaner, how would you respond to that? Is that easy to replicate? Um, so I, we think at least uh, that our product is stylish and, sport and portable. So I'm guessing if they made another like type of fleet cleaner, it would be like heavier, it wouldn't be portable, it wouldn't be stylish. Like ours is like really unique because it has uh, the logo on it and it has the Sequoia Raven on it. So I think that's what makes the difference. Okay, thank you. So to be clear, the, the logo on it right now is solely Sequoia, correct? So have you thought of, one, what challenges that might have in terms of breaking into other markets? So say for instance, other students that may need it but may not want to have it because they go to a competitive school? Um, well, we're actually um, gonna be making, um, like not only for Sequoia, we're gonna be like selling it and manufacturing for Sequoia students here, but if we try to sell it like at like people from the outside or like other schools like Woodside, we uh, will make it simple, simpler, just like the plain clean cleaner instead of making it um, like Sequoia colors or like Sequoia on it. So good thinking with that. You may also want to consider doing some market research around what's more of a generic symbol, maybe something that considers the Bay Area like 49ers or Giants or just the football or something like that that anybody can buy at all schools so that it still has some style, but that it's not specific to a school. Yeah, this is a um, very cool product and I, I agree very innovative. Um, when you defined the, the market, it was pretty broad. I'm curious if you thought a little bit about, you know, um, who in the market might be the best consumers or might buy it first or what sports or what kinds of athletes. Have you thought about that at all? Um, yeah, we, we definitely thought about it. Um, so we chose this target market because we know that some soccer players start um, playing soccer usually in high school, and then they grow up to like, well, at least in soccer, and um, they usually like grow up and then like they become fanatics with soccer. And we've seen this like in the soccer games, and that's um, how pretty much the ages are. So we looked at the ranges of famous soccer players. And they usually start playing around like 40 or like 50, so that's what we base it off on. Great, yeah, I think it's great to start with as small of a segment as possible, small of a market, um, go for them, see what they want, see what they do right now instead of using this product, um, and really target that. That's great, thank you. Now we'll see a prototype demonstration. Stuck in my cleats. There's, oh, not, there's nothing on the 
market that can help, and it's hard for me to perform well in the game. Could this stick work? <laughs> Not really. Uh, well, I think maybe there's a separate solution. You should try the clean cleaner. <laughs> Is it doing a better job than the stick? Much better job. Hello, my name is Sophia Cipriani. <laughs> Hello. I'm the Chief Executive Officer. Hello, my name is Martin Sanchez. I'm the Chief Financial Officer. So, as you can see, if the stick um, didn't really help get the mud out as well, then it, it's not really, um, can get into the weird tight places of cleats, while the cleat cleaner can, has different types of teeth to get the mud out and it's dirty enough to get Hernandez. I'm Benjamin Elliott. Hi, my name is Daniela Ramirez. And our team name is Zip, Zip and Clip. How can find your apparel today? Now, going over a quick organizational chart, um, I myself, Brandon Atai, am uh, one of the CEOs up here with me. I have uh, one of our CDOs, Daniela Ramirez, uh, one of our CMOs, Alex Hernandez, and uh, one of our CFOs, uh, or our only CFO actually, Benjamin Elliott. Um, the rest of the team is, uh, you will be seeing later in the presentation as they will be doing the prototype demonstration. That will be uh, my co-CEO, Myra, Myra Garcia. Uh, that will be our other CDO, Janelli Hernandez, and our other CMO, Hector Contreras. Now, what happens when we wear clothes that don't have pockets? Well, in short, we don't have a way to store our things. Now, I was going for a run about two weeks ago, and I was wearing some track pants. And I wanted to stop at Safeway and get a drink after uh, I was done with my run. However, when I got there, I realized I didn't have my wallet. And why didn't I have my wallet? Well, my track pants did not have pockets. This posed a huge problem to me as I simply could not get a drink because I had no money in my pockets. Uh, so, what is our product and why does it solve this problem? Well, our product is called the detachable pocket. Um, the product is a simple latch-on pocket that can be placed onto most, article, most articles of clothing. Um, most commonly it would be placed on the waistline, it would just snap on. Um, and the pocket has, is about the size of a smartphone, it's about that big. Um, and it just clips onto your waistline and it has in it Velcros together uh, to close. So the purpose of this pocket would be to store items such as keys, phones, wallets, and spare change. Uh, so here are a few product photos, and moving on. Our target market is simply um, moderate, uh, moderate income level, both male and female, and physical people. These people require more space in their pockets because what they wear, like yoga pants and basketball shorts, and right now, those things don't have pockets. We are targeting athletes, coaches, referees, and people who exercise. Why? Uh, I can show you an example, which I've seen in games that some referees drop cans and, and referees drop flags, and this could be a solution to it. 
Our secondary target market is teachers, construction workers, and janitors. These people are mostly in the rush because in the morning there's traffic and this could be like a solution to their problem. There's a Friday night game and there's a water boy named Vero in football. He's sprinting, he's looking everywhere and he's trying to fit all these stuff like a whistle, a tee, and um, a water ball. Oh, well, I mean, sorry, a uh, water ball. He's looking everywhere and he's trying to figure out a solution to his problem. And he's wearing skinny jeans so he can't fit all this stuff. <laughs> he's looking everywhere, he looks at this guy named Brandon. He's like, wow, these people are selling detachable pockets. This could be my solution to my problems. He sprints, he's running to him, and he's all like, how much is this detachable pocket? Eleven ninety nine, sir. He gives him twelve dollars, boom, his problems are all solved. We're assigning the price for the touch pocket, eleven ninety nine, and we are promoting this by Facebook, and which we have a Facebook page and posters. For our startup cost, we'll have to buy a pair of scissors for for four dollars and forty nine cents, because we need a good pair of scissors to cut through the cloth. And we currently have multiple sewing machines that we can borrow, so we do not need to purchase one. So our cost of goods sold is $5.16 per unit, and we're currently looking at using Velcro to seal our pocket instead of zippers, so that would lower the cost. Sales, revenue, and profit. We priced our pocket at $11.99 because the consumer research said they paid $10 to $15, and so our profit per unit would be $6.83. For an investment, we are asking for $135. This gives us an inventory of 20 pockets and covers our startup costs and leaves us with a cushion of $27. We break even after 12 pockets sold. Okay, so quickly going over our competitors. Our two main competitors are the Porta Pocket and the Everest Fanny Pack. Now, go going over the Porta Pocket, uh, the Porta Pocket uses straps for adjustment, with, which can be tedious and annoying to customers, whereas the detachable pocket just simply clips on and you're ready to go. Uh, the Porta Pocket also has a logo in front of the pocket, uh, whereas the detachable pocket does not, adding to a more sleek look. Um, and also, the porta pocket is mainly aimed at young adults, whereas the detachable pocket is um, aimed at active people in general. And also, uh, they sell the porta pocket at $25, whereas we are selling the detachable pocket at $12. The Everest Fanny Pack is 14 inches long, <clears throat> has a strap around the waist, which can, very, can, which can be very um, annoying to some people. The price is $13.99, which is $2 more than our product. Consumer research. We survey athletes, athlete parents, and we um, got that they will pay $10, $15. Um, the age was 30 to their mid, 20 to their mid 30s, and they were read three to four times a week. Thank you very much for listening to our presentation, and remember, don't let your items control your actions. Pocketify your apparel today. We will now take questions. Thanks, guys. This is a really great presentation. I'm uh, very interested to see what it looks like. Um, in terms of uh, just when you work, so it seems like your target market is the athletic market, and I was looking at your competitors' products. So, did you guys consider some other things that the athletic market might be looking for? So, waterproof fabric, for example, or security while moving around, um, probably you know, very quickly, right? So, uh, did you look at these things and make sure that they're addressed? So, we thought about making a waterproof one, but to start, we'll only make just the regular one, and as our business grows, we may make a waterproof one. And we did some tests, like running up and down the halls, and we found that the, the pocket stays pretty well attached and doesn't flop around. Great, sounds like you guys put a lot onto this. 
Uh, just adding again, I think your presentation was uh, amazing, uh, very good style. Uh, curious to know on the operating costs, why do you think there would be no operating costs? Because what about you know, all the labor and maybe delivery? Um, well, currently we make our own pockets and we have sewing machines that we can borrow. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, for the operating costs, the only thing that we left, that we may have would be like business cards, but we don't, we aren't using them right now. Okay, thank you. So you mentioned you have a Facebook page and you have posters that you'll be putting up and whatnot, right? Um, one of the things that comes to mind is you have a great name right now to your product, Zip and Clip, but I know that you guys are considering moving away from the zipper to the Velcro. So what types of impacts do you see that happening? Do you see happening once you make that change to the name, the posters you may have already created, just your overall branding? Well, that's a great question. Thank you for asking that. Um, I believe that we would actually have to change our name uh, if we were to change the style of the pocket to strictly Velcro instead of zippers, um, and that would change a few things. However, um, it would definitely be manageable. Okay, so maybe something to consider doing more market research around that and potentially deciding that before you start investing too much into some of those other avenues. Definitely. Uh, great, great presentation, guys. Um, and yeah, also I think very good problem statement. I think uh, there, especially with people that are on pockets and skinny jeans, I think there's a lot there. So um, I was going to ask. I mean, this is this product is something very. It's very visible, right? It's like right out in the open. It's not subtle anymore the way that a pocket might be subtle. Have you thought about what you're going to do to make it cool? Make it something that people want to wear and other people would see and think that they'd want to wear that too. So, um, so I see many girls wearing like bright colors. So um, I suggested that um, we bring different styles for men and women since our target market is men and women. So and also we um, decided to put like something that has to do with athletic people people <laughs> because I think that will attract them more than other people that is not our target market. Yeah, I think with athletics, I mean, you see more and more people buying athletic clothes that also look cool. So definitely something to think about. Um, and uh, also when you're marketing on Facebook or Instagram or wherever you are, think about what's going to make this look cool to everybody. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. We'll now see a prototype demonstration. product has this um, polyester cotton blend, cloth, and um, suspender clips, and, and um, Velcro squares. Um, the, the suspender clips are in the back, which are sewed on, and the Velcro is inside, which you can easily open and close whenever you want. Do you have any space for my phone? Cause like it's falling out. Wait, you're giving me this cause I can use it? Which are generally around six inches, so you can see. 
see that right now it's holding them. Now we'll see if they can clip on. running a little bit over. We're going to give the judges a minute to do some scoring and the students